So now, let's look at a little video that uh, will give us a good overview of what the entire protocol is all about. The foundation guide with the Monostrut Index uh, is where things begin. So here we are. There's the alveolar process, the post-extraction um, version, if you will, of the upper arch. And there's the bone foundation guide. This is what I want you to play with in advance, making sure you have good draw so that you can place that foundation guide with the built-in index immediately, okay? And feel comfortable with it because what you do here is what you're going to do in the mouth. So once the bite's verified, we can drill our holes and we'll pin the foundation guide into place. And then we'll take these fastener pins and, of course, be able to remove them. You're going to do all this in the lab this afternoon. So the pins are removed, the strut is removed, the monostrut is, is removed, and now we have the alveolar process here that needs to be reduced to the level of that guide. So we use our rongeur to start, as I've shown you, the back action rongeur, to save that bone as much as you can, and then we follow it up with the rotary burr, the large round burr. Okay? So there it is. And you want to be make sure that you're at least flush. You can even be a little concave. So now we'll take our surgical guide and position it onto the bone foundation guide. And it is pinned in place as well. It's secured. And now the appropriate keys are positioned into the master cylinders and we're able to now create our osteotomies and place our implants through the master cylinders. And you can do this in, you know, sequentially, you know, drilling each of the holes in each site uh, around the horn, so to speak, or just take one to completion one at a time. Uh, it's whatever your preference is. But the key is good irrigation, very good irrigation, and an, uh, in, an, uh, in and out motion to not uh, create any, any heat um, for the bone. And again, the implants can now be placed through the master cylinders. A mount comes with them. You can either place them manually or with a handpiece, depending on, um, on the system. And keep in mind that blue line allows you to index this nicely. So you rotate the implant in such a way that that flat surface and or dimple, depending on what system you're playing with, will line up directly with the blue line. I want to go through this whole thing first. So now you're seeing all five implants pretty much in place. The mounts are removed. And once that's done, the surgical guide is now removed. The pins, of course, are taken out. These fastener pins, and we can disarticulate our surgical guide. So implants are now in place. And what we have to do then next is to make sure we have no bone interferences, right, at the implant body rim prior to abutment placement. So we'll, we'll address that with um, appropriate uh, milling elements depending on the system you're playing with, as well as um, manually and even with a rotary burr. I typically will do that in the posterior uh, based implant sites because the distal aspect always has a bony interference. So right there, using a number eight round burr, just uh, reducing any bony interference, giving you a good path of, of draw for your abutment. And that's very important, very important. And now we've placed the multi-unit abutments. They, remember, have been pre-selected based on our workup, cuff height, angulation, etc. Torqued accordingly to manufacturer's specifications.
And again, there's an alignment element here, a reference point, uh, so that we know exactly the position of each of these multi-unit abutments. And that screw hole will line up again with the blue line. That's the index line. At this point, we can place our copings. Once, with, with, we, again, these have been pre-selected, pre-cut per implant site. Saves you a lot of time. You can appreciate the attention to detail throughout this entire protocol. So the copings are in place. There are two flat sides. The one will be actually marked, and that is to the facial all the time. So here all five are in place. And keep in mind, of course, the copings are non-engaging. They're screw retained. And now the gasket is positioned. The gasket is very important to obviously prevent any extrusion of our pickup material. It serves as like a rubber dam more or less. And um, it's very effective and is equal in thickness to the soft tissue drape. We then place our block out uh, uh, pins here basically, our straws. And at this point, we can position the prosthesis. And once this is indexed, posing arch, we can then inject our pickup material and pick up the hybrid. So now the straws are removed and we're able to remove our coping screws, of course. And then of course, that prosthesis is handed off now for refinement. This is not a conversion, again, keep in mind, this is refinement, it takes about 20, 25 minutes to do and while that's happening I'm removing the gasket on the surgical end any fixation pins uh, the three f in this case three of them are removed so the entire bone foundation guide is, is in essence taken off and of course any Grafting that has to be done, def graft extraction site defects, etc., and soft tissue closures accomplished. And at this point, we can place our bridge and secure it uh, again with screw fixation as per our typical protocol.